As COVID-19 was upgraded to a global pandemic, our lives came to a crashing halt. While many college students took advantage of the free time to binge TikToks and bake banana bread, we met with four tough students who saw the copious amounts of free time as a chance to give back. They were the class of Tisch summer students deemed COVID summer projects. To kick off our TCPL events in fall of 2020, we discussed the ins and outs behind these unique and meaningful summer projects with Radhika, Hana, Zach, and Irison. Radhika, a community health major, continued her period project to provide equitable menstrual accommodations to women and girls in India. Hana, a pre-med bio and gender studies double major, interned with Muli Mianthal Kosecha, a nonviolent national social movement run by undocumented immigrants for undocumented immigrants. She helped organize and fundraise for their mutual aid fund and helped run a campaign to demand licenses for undocumented immigrants in Massachusetts. Zach, a poli-sci major with an econ and urban studies double minor, worked with the Urban Justice Center in New York City doing legal advocacy work. And Iverson, a music major, provided free private lessons to underprivileged kids in the Boston area. Given the ever-changing and unpredictable nature of the pandemic, each student was forced to reckon with his or her reality. When COVID hit, I, as a musician, kind of lost, you know, all my concerts and gigs that I was doing. And for me, it was, it was okay because, you know, a break is nice and I've done so many concerts, but I was thinking about how kids in, you know, middle school or high school, uh, this is kind of a formative time for them um uh training wise that they're going to get be getting the most training and and they can't get any training now they can't play in youth orchestras or groups or get lessons and lessons are so expensive yeah um honestly and i'm and i've still been helping kosecha with their grant their grant process in the fall um but honestly a lot of the foundations that they usually get grants from or that they have thought that they would get grants from have not been giving out any money um because of the because of the pandemic, um, which means that although Kosicha has been able to do fairly well in 2020, they're pretty concerned about 2021. Um, they don't have any full-time staff members who get salaries and so they support um, the community through a mutual aid system. Um, so I think that their their style of um they're, they're like the style of the movement is is pretty sustainable, even though that they aren't able to get a lot of money right now. But it has definitely been pretty disheartening. I applied personally for like four grants that we didn't get. Um, that would have been like over two hundred thousand dollars for the movement. Along with millions of other Americans, each student faced challenges which required major pivots in action or outlook. Um, but one thing that has been really cool was doing the work with the mutual aid network, which I'm sure other people have also been involved with different sorts of mutual aid during this time. Um, and that's been exciting because I think it's a really um, new and important way for, for people to be giving money directly to communities rather than through foundations um, and just a way in general to build community. Um, so that was something that I helped do some events for. Um, so that was a good experience as well. So toward the end, that's when the courts were starting to open again, but not in person. And they're usually relying on Zoom, but some issues that arose with that. Some of the low-income clients we worked with didn't necessarily have the same access to technology or Zoom that would allow them to be present in those hearings. So we definitely had to come up with ways to combat that. And I think that's kind of the focus of what Urban Justice Center is trying to do right now. I partnered with the Bluegrass Indo-American Civic Society, which has a lot of connections in India and we worked specifically with schools that they fund in India so that um, girls who are of school going age would be able to access period supplies and we built 11 toilets in one village this summer. It really had to be done from within and that was not something that I was expecting going in. Um, so a lot of the work that we did had to be changed kind of as I was going through it, a lot of it was just um, things were changing every day, basically. And um, there were a lot of early mornings, late nights, so I could work on their schedule. And yeah, so a lot of it was just like 
having to adapt every single day, but I think the best thing that came out of it was that everything was locally sourced, making it more sustainable in the long run anyway. In addition to necessary pivots, it was clear each student acted with the utmost care and intention. It came out of a desire to like want people to have as many musical experiences as they can in that formative time. There's an organization called Project Step in Boston, which is really great. Um, and I got a few students from that. And then another organization, which the link is in the chat, is um, Boston Universe, sorry, not Boston University, Boston Symphony. The Youth Symphony has a program called um, ICP, Intensive Community Program. And these are kids who otherwise wouldn't be able to pay the thousands of dollars it costs to be in a youth orchestra. And they were super excited. They, they just wanted to keep playing cello. For me, I had started this work in 2019 um, because I'm Indian American. And so my own exposure to the menstrual stigma came from my trips to India and just seeing how the stigma really manifests itself. And for me, I was lucky enough to, for my parents and my family to not uphold these stigmas in my own house. But once I had been exposed to it in India and learned that 23 million girls drop out of school after they start, after they start their periods, um, it just became really apparent how huge of an issue this is. And so I founded a nonprofit called Project Period in 2019. So it is relatively new, but as the pandemic hit, it just became a lot more exasperated. All of these issues just became a lot worse. And so I kind of reframed the way I approached things. Beyond all of the amazing work and clear impact made, each student also reflected on his or her favorite moment or takeaway. I definitely had a, an experience that was pretty powerful. My, one of the students I taught, it was actually the student I taught the most probably, his, he had quit cello um, right around the time COVID starting, had started because his, um, his dad uh, died and he 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 had moved from here from South America a few years ago, but his dad was still there, and he had learned that his dad died, and um, he kind of you know quit cello and everything. And and um, I found him through actually my cello teacher, and I as I was working with him, he, he you know he wasn't very like engaged, which which is totally fair and makes sense. But, um, but as we went along, he was he was definitely getting better and better and getting more you know getting back into it. And I think my favorite lesson was our our final lesson when I told him, I was like, oh, well, it was at the end of the summer. I said, we'll, we'll just work on whatever you want. And we ended up not even playing cello. We just talked for like an hour or two about um, about movies and, and stuff that he liked. And he, he, he was so excited and uh, just so, I don't know, he seemed to be full of full of life and really passionate. And it was just nice to have that connection, especially with someone who I know you know, was planning on just quitting music and stuff. So I don't know, that was really powerful for me, yeah. I would say that it's just, and we all probably know this at this point, but like, it's really hard to do any sort of work like this virtually. It's really lonely and isolating. Um, so that was something that I definitely struggled with. And in the future, I, I wish that I had had formed more of a community around myself to support me in the work that I was doing. I think the pandemic really put a lot into perspective for me. Like for instance, I was sitting <laughs> in my basement on Long Island um, on the phone with people who were on the streets in New York City. I completely agree. And for me, honestly, I think when I went home, I had so much free time because all of my classes just seemed really insignificant almost. Um, it just seemed like there was so much going on and that like this chemistry test doesn't really matter that much in the grand scheme of things. And although that shouldn't have opened up as much time for me, it honestly gave me a lot of time to do other things. And for me, that meant leaning in and seeing how I can support others um, who don't have the same privileges as me during a pandemic. Um, yeah, so it was honestly just a mix of like losing motivation in one spot and gaining it in the real world, I guess. 
Thank you for tuning in to our TCPL podcast promo. We hope you stay tuned for full episodes and other events.